Jordan from the Limiting Factor YouTube channel just shared the results from the Made in Texas Model Y 4680 battery that he recently had analyzed, and the energy density numbers were lower than I expected. Let's talk about the implications of this new data based on some topics that I've discussed in the past. I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watt. Now that we have more data coming in for these 4680 batteries, previously we had data for charging speeds. Now we have more conclusive data about the energy density of these battery cells and some of the chemistry um, details of these battery cells. The data that we have so far is less than impressive. I will admit that I naively expected more from the first generation of Tesla's 4680 battery cells, but the more I dive into battery research and research new technologies, um, and ramping up of battery manufacturing. Um, what Tesla has done so far is impressive. The fact that they've gone from an announcement in September of 2020 to um, battery cells in a vehicle here in 2022, and really not having previous battery manufacturing experience before that, that's really impressive. And now that Tesla is ramping up production of these 4680 batteries beyond just their pilot facility, I believe we're going to see serious improvements in the coming future. Now, among the claims that Tesla made at Battery Day, um, that first column had to do with range increases. With the cell design, the anode material improvements, cathode material improvements, and also cell vehicle integration or structural battery packs, they hope to eventually achieve a 54% range increase potential. Now, here's a chart that I've shown in past videos, and based on the estimates that we had before the most recent data came out, based on multiple sources, I estimated that the cell level energy density of the 4680 battery was somewhere between 260 to 296 watt hours per kilogram. However, the most recent results from the Limiting Factor YouTube channel show that the 4680 battery, at least this first generation version, has a nominal energy density of around 244 watt hours per kilogram. So that means that the current generation of 4680 battery cells is less energy dense than the 2170 battery cells that Tesla currently uses in the Model Y and the Model 3. I definitely recommend that you go over to the Limiting Factor YouTube channel, watch Jordan's full video on this topic because he dives into a lot more details than I'm sharing here regarding energy density and comparisons between the 2170 technology and the 4680 technology. But one of the big reasons why the 2170 cells are more energy dense than the 4680 battery cells as they sit right now comes down to the fact that this first generation 4680 battery cell has no silicon in the anode and um, the 4680 battery cell has a thicker uh, exterior can, which means it has less active material, thus lowering the energy density. With this new data in mind, it makes more sense why Tesla opted to not use the 4680 batteries in the first generation of the Tesla Semi, uh, the semis that will be delivered to Pepsi on December 1st, for instance. And in addition, uh, we know based on previous data that I've talked about in the past that when you compare the charging speed of a 4680 equipped Model Y as compared to a 2170 equipped Model Y, the 2170 equipped Model Y will charge faster. So as we sit right now with the first generation of 4680 battery technology, the 2170 batteries are still superior in energy density and they're still superior when it comes to charging speed. So thus it makes sense that Tesla decided to go with a more fully developed 2170 70 battery technology for the Tesla Semi. Beyond the Tesla Semi, I now want to move to a topic that I talked about in a past video where I theorized that the standard range all-wheel drive Model Y with an EPA range of 279 miles, I theorized that, that vehicle possibly had a software-locked battery pack. I came to this conclusion with several pieces of data that we had at the time. The first one was the fact that um, if you go to EPA documents, you can see that the standard range all-wheel drive Model Y weighs nearly as much as the long range all-wheel drive Model Y, despite the huge range difference. Based on EPA documents in the past, I calculated that the usable battery capacity of the standard range all-wheel drive Model Y was somewhere around 68 kilowatt hours. And I showed how the standard range all-wheel drive Model Y was only seven pounds lighter, despite a huge battery capacity difference between the two models. However, since we now have this new data from the limiting factor, and we know that the um, actual 4680 battery cells have somewhere around 86.5 watt hours of energy per battery cell, we know that the total battery pack size of the standard range all-wheel drive Model Y is somewhere around 71.6 kilowatt hours, with around 67 to 68 kilowatt hours of that actually being usable. 
This is, of course, quite a bit less than some of the estimates that we talked about in the past based on previous data. Okay, so far we've talked a lot about cell energy density. Um, I'd like to theorize a little bit about pack level energy density now with more data. So based on EPA documents, we know that the long range all wheel drive Tesla Model Y has a pack level energy density of around 180 watt hours per kilogram. Thus, the pack likely weighs somewhere a bit over a thousand pounds. Based on the limiting factors estimates, we know that the battery pack size of the standard range all wheel drive Model Y, not the usable, but the full battery pack size is somewhere around 71.6 kilowatt hours. And while I know my estimate's going to be a little bit off because we're talking about a structural battery pack here, one that incorporates the floor of the vehicle into the pack, but one way to explain the seven pound difference would be that the pack level energy density of the standard range all wheel drive Model Y being around 158 watt hours per kilogram. Now, if we go and we compare that to existing battery technologies, the current Tesla Model S and X equipped with 18650 cells has a pack level energy density of around 186 watt hours per kilogram. And I estimate that the 18650 current generation of those battery cells is somewhere around 280 watt hours per kilogram. As I mentioned earlier, the long range all wheel drive and performance Tesla Model Y equipped with 2170 batteries has a pack level energy density of around 180 watt hours per kilogram. And I estimate that the cell level energy density of these 2170 cells is around 263 watt hours per kilogram. Thus, when it comes to the actual packing efficiency of these packs, you can see that if we assume a pack level energy density of 158 watt hours per kilogram for the structural 4680 battery pack, and we started with a cell level energy density of 244 watt hours per kilogram, that means that this structural pack is potentially less efficient right now in packing than the existing battery technology. Hopefully, as Troy Teslite mentioned on Twitter in February of this year, Tesla is able to greatly increase the energy density of the 4680 battery cells with future generations. Because if that were the case and Tesla were able to stick with 828 battery cells in the Model Y, that would allow for the battery pack to increase quite a bit based on these estimates. And I could even see the potential for a 400 mile range Model Y if Tesla is able to greatly increase the energy density of the batteries with future generations. Do note that as I talked about in the past, not only is increasing the energy density of battery cells important for increasing range um, and potentially decreasing the battery pack size. If each battery cell is more energy dense, you can put less of those battery cells in the battery pack and thus save cost. But in addition, when it comes to Tesla's goals of producing uh, three terawatt hours of batteries by 2030, if each battery cell increases in energy density, that means you have to produce less battery cells to reach three terawatt hours of batteries. So in Tesla's aggressive goals towards producing a lot of batteries in the future, increasing the energy density of these battery cells is going to be key. Tesla will of course do that in a number of ways. Uh, one of the big ways will be uh, tweaking the chemistry of the batteries themselves and the design a little bit and incorporating silicon in the anode as they talked about at battery day. In the end, I still have confidence in Tesla reaching the goals that they talked about, and I'm definitely going to be watching this with a close eye and be reporting information as I get it. I'm still trying to find out um, from my sources how many battery cells Tesla is producing per day at their factories. And so if I get that data, I'll share that out to you. And please let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. Once again, if you have more information to share on this topic or other battery related topics, feel free to email me. My email address is john, J-O-N at cleanerwatt.com. Again, john, J-O-N at cleanerwatt.com. Or let me know what you have to say in the comments section below as well. I love to hear from you. Also, I want to say a special thank you to my Patreon supporters who support me every month and really do help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the rest of the supporters on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.